Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State of Tech. Today I've got a fun project. We're gonna build an external hard drive together, an NVMe fast hard drive that should give us really good read and write speeds. Now, I have here two different items. This is the ROG Strix Arion, I believe. It is a SSD enclosure. And then I have an NVMe here from Sabrent that we're gonna put in two terabytes and we're gonna have a nice fast external uh, storage device. Now you could buy stuff like this already made. They're uh, still pretty expensive NVMe uh, drives living outside of your actual computer. Still a little expensive to buy but I've been watching the prices kind of get a little bit more reasonable and I wanted to give it a try. So this is a screwdriverless design, so we're not actually gonna need anything other than a nice knife to open everything up. So we'll go ahead and get started. We're gonna build this, it shouldn't take very long, and then we're gonna test the read and write speeds and see if uh, they are really uh, that good because you know I've seen some reviews of these different enclosures There are definitely a lot of NVMe enclosures out there And I wanted one that was going to be as future-proof as possible uh, You know in technology that's very hard to come by but uh, with this it has USB 3.2 Gen 2 and so that should give us a little bit of future proofing going into the rest of 2020 into 2021. All right, so here's our enclosure. Underneath here we have a, uh, um, looks like a SIM card tray opener. Maybe that is what opens up uh, and the reason why we don't actually need a screwdriver. We then have a little belt clip looking thing or like a little hook and then a rubber bumper that I think kind of holds everything together. Underneath that is our cables. We have a USB-A to USB-C, and then we have a USB-C to USB-C. Those are great uh, because I'm right now using a Mac, and then on my PC I also have, uh, it, I have available USB-C ports on the PC. This is the, the cable that I will probably use the most. And I'll just leave the other one right down in there. All right, so we're gonna set this stuff off to the side and start to put together our drive. So let's get it out of its packaging. Now the reason that I went with this uh, is not because I want RGB lighting or anything like that. What I really wanted was a nice durable uh, enclosure from a brand that I was familiar with. There are a lot of brands that make these enclosures, um, not exactly the style, but make NVMe enclosures. Most of them were USB 3.1. It was very hard to find one that was USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, Type C, and that's basically what I wanted was the best of the best, because if you're gonna spend the money to put an NVMe hard drive in an enclosure to use as an external drive, you want an enclosure that's going to be able to give you the performance that this drive can actually put out. And uh, these NVMe drives are pretty fast. So let's go ahead and get this out of here. I have never purchased a Sabrent NVMe before. I've uh, always kind of purchased Samsung uh, NVMe's and so this is different. I do know that there are new generation NVMEs coming out soon that are going to be pretty fast, but because of read and write speed limitations and stuff going over cables and depending on what computer you're actually uh, connecting to, I felt that it was probably fine just to go with an NVME of a uh, current generation and that I'd just be fine there. So uh, we have a standoff here. That is something that will require a screwdriver. It says screwdriverless design. And um, I'm assuming that you would, because there are different uh, lengths here so that this can fit different types of NVMe drives depending on the size and the form factor. So I guess I could just, there we go, screwdriverless. I didn't use a screwdriver. I used, uh, I used the uh, ejector, so. Still screwdriverless nonetheless. So we'll go ahead and just put the NVMe in here, slide it in, very simple. And then this is a slotted screw 
So we're actually going to put the slot on the side right into the slot on the drive and then lower it into place and then screw the screw in. So it acts as a standoff and a screw all in one, which is pretty neat. Um, go ahead and just make sure that's nice and snug like so. It has all of the uh, padding and kind of, um, you know, thermal transfer tape all in place already, which is nice. So now we just need to put this back together. Um, make sure I get this. There we go. And it is a tight, snug fit, but you want to push it down enough until you feel it snap into place. That way this doesn't come off on you. I'm going to check to make sure that it is nice and tight by just applying a little bit of pressure here just to make sure. And we are locked into place. Very nice. So we have our drive installed. I can now add on the outer bumper here to kind of seal everything together. So we'll go ahead and put that on. This is uh, kind of like adding a cell phone bumper to your phone just to give it a little bit of protection. Uh, I don't think it's actually required to use this, but it came with it. So let's put it on. And it is a snug fit as well. But there we go. Very nice. There we go. Feed that through and Velcro. And now we have it installed. So let's get all of our stuff set aside here. We're going to plug it into the Mac and do a speed test. The reason I'm doing this on a Mac is simply because I want to use the... Uh, the Blackmagic speed test tool. And I primarily will be using this on a Mac, but I always format my drives so that they will work cross platform. And so uh, when I do format this drive for my Mac here, I will be formatting it so that it will work on both Mac and PC. I will not be formatting it Mac journaled or whatever it's called. I'll be formatting it um, to, to work on both. All right, so the moment of truth, we're gonna go ahead and grab the drive. It is a little heavy, but that is definitely due to the uh, density of the, of the case here. It is a pretty dense case, heavy duty. Uh, plugging it in, it starts to go through kind of an RGB cycle. Of course, I need to initialize this on my Mac, as you can see here. It will not read it. Same thing would happen on a PC. You would need to format it. And so I will initialize that and I probably will go and uh, actually go into the disk utility and just take a look and see. It's uh, showing that it's uh, n has not been initialized yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this drive. But instead of choosing Mac OS Extended Journaled, I'm going to choose XFAT and XFAT is going to allow me to use this anywhere. So um, I'll just call it ASUS 2 terabyte for now because I can't come up with anything else better off the top of my head. It's gonna go ahead and format and mount the drive and we are good to go. As you can see here, if I open up the drive, we've got two terabytes available, awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the Blackmagic speed test now. I'll open up that application. I will select the drive. And begin the test. So we're looking at 945 megabytes per second write and 827 megabytes per second read. It's not quite as fast as I thought it would be, but that is significantly faster than a standard SSD drive. So I'm not, I'm not mad about that. It's just not as good as I thought it would be. And that could be a limitation of the Sabrent drive. This was not a super expensive NVMe. And so I'm putting up the specs for that NVMe right now so you can see what the NVMe would be uh, rated if it was actually installed inside of a PC. 
So not bad. I still, this is significantly better than anything else that I have right now at the price point that it cost to assemble this and how easy it was. It's definitely a cheaper option than buying something out uh, that's already put together. And what's nice about this is that it's upgradable. So if I chose to put a four terabyte drive in it later, I can do that. If I chose to get an upgraded drive as the newer generation NVMEs came out, I can do that. So definitely uh, gonna be a performance boost for me, not as much as I had hoped, but still pretty good nonetheless. So let me know what you thought about this little project, something very simple that is easy to do if you've ever thought about building your own external SSD instead. The NVMe option is fantastic because you get very fast read and write speeds uh, compared to the standard SSDs, and this is highly upgradable moving into the future. So go ahead and hit that like button for me, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll be back soon with another video. We hope to see you there.